What up guys, it is day three. I feel good, good as I could feel. I might not sound great. <laughs> the perfect result for the lads. In a situation where we know what we need to do and it's very achievable. So we're gonna head over to uh, the venue in about an hour or so and just do what we need to do. Focus on recovery, focus on getting them back to 100% ready to smash the final. Luckily they've They've not worked that hard to get through. They've been, you know, conservative, they've been sensible, so we're in a fantastic position. Jordan, how are you? I'm Pete Thomas. I challenge you to a thumb battle. Okay. Are you ready to be beaten? No. Two, two nine, 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 three, one, thumb bar. One, two, three. No. Oh, oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I go to three. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, David. Yes! <laughs> day three, bruh. Yes, so this is the morning of day three of the Heaps of World Strongest Man. A lot more relaxed today. Just waiting to go down to the venue. Tom's away down there already. She, I'm quite a good position. I don't have to do too much today. It'll be more about recovering. So I want to get some fizzy when I get down there. Probably come back to the hotel, do some hot and cold again. Eating wise, it's pretty chilled. It's not too bad, not too intense. Kind of give the body a little break. Kind of today, tomorrow to chill. And then we do the finals Saturday, Sunday. So yeah, quite a, a different position from last year, which is really nice. Now last year, our group, there's a couple of groups I think that's probably in the same position. There is still a lot to play for with uh, a lot of these guys, so, you know, big shout out to them. Big Gav Bolton, um, he's looking really good, I hope he does it, man. Gav's had some battles, physically, mentally as well, and he's, he's looking so switched on, so happy for him, so he's putting in a great performance. Our good friend Adam Bishop, big shout out to him. Yeah, he ju he's just got to go balls to the wall today, Adam. He had the best log press I've ever seen him do yesterday, and that's not meant in a disrespect, yeah, patronising me at all, he was just, every rep looked absolutely impeccable. And then our big buddy Brian, um, he's he's pulled it back, he's battling like a champion. So, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a hell of a day. It's going to be a big mix-up, I think, I, I don't know who's going to make the final. Well, I know two people have made the final already, so that's all I can say. But yeah, so today for me, it's nice and relaxed. Just br bring it down a little bit, because the last couple of days have been really intense. I want to be absolutely wrecked by Sunday evening. I want to leave everything here. I don't want to be able to walk after the final on Sunday. I want to be done. And I want to be world's strongest man. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Who are you here to support? Look at Tom. Oh, both of them. Yeah, he's your favorite. My favorite? Yeah. Tommy. <laughs> How are you finding the event so far, man? Oh, lots of fun. My first one in person, but with my grandson here, it's even fun. It's a, it's a nice way to leave a legacy. Huh, Luke? Oh, I love it. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. And everybody's just so nice, you know? And I just never, you know, you don't get perspective on the internet of uh, how huge these guys are. These guys are huge. Yeah. It's awesome. Tom Stoven! We love you! Hey Tommy boy, you alright? Yeah, I'm alright, I'm good. Hey. How was it? That was the hardest one. <laughs> Petrified of that. Yeah. I was up there for about an hour, felt like, but yeah, job done. Now I get to chill out, but that was scary. I was shaking. Did you not see me? No. <laughs> okay. That's how you play up to the crowd a little bit as well. I was shaking for that was hard, but yeah. Job done, two days of rest. I've got some good events in the final. It's That's the main thing, so all good. What are you doing for the rest of the day, mate? Gotta go watch some of the boys. I actually get to watch the last man standing stone without doing it, which will be good. Hopefully cheer on some of the British guys. Adam Bishop's got still some work to do. Gavin Bilton as well, see these guys hopefully get through. And then, yeah, just as I said, get ready for the final. Chilled out. How does it feel like you don't have to do the yeah, it's so good, you know. Just, uh, that's my main goal was to do the first two days as hard as I could, and then, well, not hard, but cruise through the first two days and then have two days to chill, and that's what I did. So, plan's going to come in together, and now we're going to be back to back, baby. Yeah. This is the only one I've got, one, sorry. Uh -huh. Come back for the fight, I'll give you some, okay? Right. okay. Pictures, yeah, of course you, you can, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's an honor. Thank you. Man. I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, call therapy and call oh, wow. and everything. And, I've been you know, to that I saw I so I don't mean to keep you. No, no, you're fine. I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time. So I saw you guys first in 2019. 
right Writing okay. can be everything. <laughs> yeah. You and Tom are like a, a, an inspiration to me. Thank you, I really I, appreciate it. I am like hum so humbled to meet you. Hey, geez. I, that's a blessing, honestly. Thank right. you. Give us a cut up. Come on. Take it on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's an honor. You look after yourself, okay? I will. Thank you. I'm okay. rooting for you and Tom. Thank you. I'll be here Saturday, Sunday. Thank you, man. It's game on. Yeah. Right, friend, stay spicy. Stay spicy. Stay sexy. <laughs> stay hungry. Yes, Get man. ready to mess it up and get ready to go, man. You understand? I'm pumped for you guys. I'm too, man. I see you have a lot of energy. Yeah, so. man. We're rooting for you guys. Oh, thank you, man. Can so I get, can I get yes, a Yes, of course you can. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure. Good my luck. pleasure. Thank Good you. Luck. Awesome, man. Thank Good you. Job, bro. Thank you, sir. Sweet, sir. Cheers. Thank you so much, man. Take care. Oh, well, let's stay done. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Maybe in years gone by, I would have gone out and kind of tried to make a show of that last event. But I think that kind of shows the the kind of mental maturity now that I've got. Um, I'm just putting myself first. Um, I don't owe it to anyone else to go out and do an event. So um, you know, some of the guys asked me to go and do it, and you know, I can't risk any injury. You know, I've I've got a final to look at. I worked hard in the first four events, managed to get enough enough points ahead of everyone else to not have to do the last event so yeah I need to uh, you know stay focused and just keep that kind of uh, that attitude you know that, that kind of uh, it's just just for me this year that's all I'm doing it for so um, yeah quite an easy day really it's nice so as far as you know has this ever happened before right? No one um, I, I don't know I'm sure it has I'm sure yeah. I, I don't know ask big laws I'm sure laws <laughs> Go over and watch Laws of Channel, he's probably got some fat. Um, but yeah, it's good. Um, I mean, I spoke to Eddie there, I said, Eddie, what would you do? Would you have done it? He says, no, but I, of course I wouldn't have done it, it's stupid. So for me, that's, um, you know, you have to have that champion's mindset and that's what I had there. So yeah, pretty happy. Um, Big Tommy held on for a couple of seconds, that's him through. So yeah, wish all the best to the guys in the stone off, it's going to be tough. Um, I've been there many a time, so I know how it feels. So, um, yeah, safe, safe battle in the stone, off, stone off, guys, and we'll uh, see whoever it is in the final. Cool. Uh, everyone, meet Tyler. Hi. <laughs> Tyler works with Lululemon, and he's kindly given Luke some Lululemon shorts. What size are these, Tyler? Double XL. Do you think he's gonna fit? Okay. Uh, if I don't, I'll make him fit me. Because <laughs> I love Lululemon. This is incredible. Thank you so much. You're welcome, of course. Cushy's a milk, Cushy's a milk, 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 milk. Oh, 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 I didn't see you guys there. I'll see you guys later. Okay. Wow. So you know what we have. Yeah. And then that's the frank. It's been upside down. Is that normal? Is that? Oh, it's stuck up? in the lid. That's grade five. Is that the grade up? Yeah. So you still can't really tell because. So when it's hot, you can tell with it. Yeah. And then that's the next grade up. I can't tell a tacky's when it when it's not actually. I just wait till the day and then. And then that's even hotter, but it's what him stuck do you think? Lid. Oh, right now, if, if it was the weather right now, what do you think? The one I use? Four. Grade four so would be fine. Use? Yeah, that's your normal one. I think for Luke, we'd use grade five. And then, if it gets a bit hotter, you go up to grade five, then Luke goes up to grade six. Yeah, but I, that's what I'm trying to do as well. Tacky's tacky for me, like. Yeah. I don't want to overthink it. Like last year, I was just like, put it on me. And what we'll do is, I'll take all of that on Sunday. And then you can open it and go, I'll use that one. You don't even need to look at what the <laughs> lid says. Just pick what tacky you want. Yeah. That'll be good. Can't wait just to get back to heating because I don't even feel like I've done anything. Right guys, it's day three of World Strollers, man. This is the last day of qualifications. There were some mental stone-offs today. Some few shocks that got through to the final. I might be competing on the weekend. You just have to find out. And I'm going to obviously talk about the qualifications, you know, how I felt about doing all the events and how the qualification went. I've got some amazing athletes in my group. First one, Angulo. So obviously Angulo, never ever heard of him before. I think he's 45 years old, it's his first international competition. I think he's from North America, which is like Mexico. 
uh, somewhere, somewhere like that. You want people to have fun at this sport and enjoy themselves. And he was, you know, he was laughing about, he was taking photos. He had his wee GoPro out, running after people wanting photos. He was just like a big kid, you know, and I think, you know, people like him dream to be at this kind of stage. And it's nice that he was, you know, felt that he was able to, you know, take everything in. He had some good events and that everybody was friendly to him. It's nice just to have some new guy here and yeah, what a guy he was. Unfortunately, Padwire wasn't there, so it was replaced by Andy Black. A lot of people know Andy Black already. You know, he's proved himself Scottish level, UK level, British level now. Getting invites to Giants Live all over the block. He's always wanted to be at World's Draws Man and, you know, he was in the right place at the right time here. He got the call up last minute and he took it with both hands, you know, he's performed good. 24 hours to prepare for a competition to get him mentally. Plus he was out here a few days before doing testing events and stuff, you know, it's gonna drain your body. But like I said, Andy Black had nothing to lose. He's here, it's his first time. It looked like he was just soaking it all up. I mean, in the grip event today, he's like, someone get me a Starburst. The crowd are loving it, he was loving it. So yeah, he was just a cool guy to, you know, obviously having a group, countryman, very good athlete, and he's gonna come back as well and, you know, get another shot at World Strongest Man. Ivers, everyone knows Ivers. Ivers was the first guy that I beat in a stone off to make my first World Strongest Man final. You know, he's been around for a long time. He's proven himself at the biggest, best of levels as well. So he's an all-round athlete, very dangerous athlete, and again, a nice, nice guy. So not much more to say about him, just a quality guy and a quality uh, strongman. So Raheem, this again, this was a lot, uh, a guy that I never heard of from Canada. JF had spoken highly of this guy. I mean, winning Canada Strongest Man, I think <laughs> we should have took more notice because, yeah, he, uh, Shot me uh, in my group, like getting to the stone off and beating uh, Fairs was an unbelievable achievement and to have three Canadians in the finals mental. But yeah, anyway, this guy all round, he was good. You know, every sing single, I think every single uh, event he was top three in. Consistency is key in a, in a comp like this and uh, he proved it, you know, he ended up top three in every event, going to the stone off and winning and getting a place in the final, which is fully deserved. So that must be a massive, Bad for him in his first World Strongest Man final and his first World Strongest Man appearance. Like Kevin Ferris, he doesn't need any introduction. Everybody knows he's been at Glasgow's Giants Lives. He's been with Luke's battle last year at World Strongest Man. He's done a few battles all round, unbelievable at grip. You know, good at moving, good pressing event. So he's just again another all round athlete who's been at the World Strongest Man a few times. He's been unlucky with some of the you know the last man standing stone obviously last year, this year as well. But it's the nature of the sport. You know, he's gonna come back bigger and better as well next year and hopefully you know get past this stone for the third time but yeah an unbelievable athlete the first two events of qualification were on the tuesday loading race deadlift medley the first day and the first event was loading uh, i want to talk about the events but just how kind of chilled out i am you know i don't really show any emotion at all there's a few guys that have been getting emotion after like after the events and stuff but for me qualifiers qualifiers for the athlete i am for being me being world stars man not being big headed or anything, but I expect to get into the final. That's why I'm not really showing too much emotion because I'm, I'm knowing my capabilities of myself that, you know, by Wednesday night or whatever day it is, I should be a finalist at World Strongest Man. So yeah, the first event came. I think the fastest time was 42 or something before me. So I knew that, you know, in loading, I, I know that I can always go like, uh, you know, fast, but, um, I was thinking in my head maybe 40, 39 seconds. I didn't need to go full tilt in this one because it was five implements, yes, but there were eight meters and they were all quite light, which was good. You know, I've picked up an anvil before, I've done the kegs, I've done the stone. So everything was quite easy, quite, you know, straightforward. Obviously the hardest thing was the stone, making sure it was stuck in place. You don't want that to fall off. So you look at other groups and you look at, you know, Hooper and uh, Novikov, Martins, all these guys went faster, but just because they got pushed and had to, I was, at a really, really nice, easy pace that I didn't really break a sweat. I wasn't tired afterwards and I recovered really quickly, which is the main thing for myself, getting through these qualifiers with as much energy in the tank as I can. First event started well. Second event, we moved on to the deadlift medley. By this point, it was so, so hot. Being the first group, we didn't get told that the floor would be quite hot. You know, when, you, when you're so used to deadlifting barefoot or with socks, whatever it is, you're not gonna go put trainers on because you don't do that in training, so why would you do that when you're at the biggest competition of your life? So I was just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's hot, it's 40 degrees, everybody's on the same boat. It just means I have to pull them faster and I'll play hot potato with my feet. I was jumping around at the start, but yeah, let's just say deadlift medley went just as I planned, you know. I knew that in my group, no one would hit the all five lifts. I was confident in that. I went up last again, it was me versus Ferris, and I knew that he would have maybe hit three, would have hit 340, maybe 360, but not, not 380. And uh, yeah, I just took my time, you know, I used 
that all my time was actually I was thinking more about my feet than I was lifting because every time I went, I stayed in that spot, the burning sensation was going through my feet and I was like, holy crap. So anyway, but that again, you know, 380. Another good thing about this is I didn't have to insert too much energy in rushing. I could take my time in every single lift. I got into the suit, got used to that again. Just went, just like I was basically like I was in training, I used all the time. Two events for me were very, very good. Maximum points in, in after first day and uh, going into the second day, you know, in a fairly good position. We'll just move on to day two. Day two again, car walk and law press for reps, 145K. Car walk, if this was an event maybe a year ago, I wouldn't have been so confident with. I think I've done car walk twice. The first time I've ever done it, I was bad at it. The second time I did it was in Glasgow last year. Hit 15, half, 16 seconds, but it's just because I hyperextended my knee. And then this year, I hit 14 seconds. Again, that was me not going full, full um, pelt as well. Again, going up last, I think 17 seconds or something was a kind of fastest one before me, so I kind of knew, let's just stay in third, fourth gear, hit 15 seconds, and it should be all right. I wanted 15 seconds, and I ended up getting 14, so that was good. The Canadian guy gave me a foot race at the start as well, so I used him as a wee pacemaker, so yeah. So that kind of, again, went better than I thought, and by this point, I was kind of like, right, I can take my feet even more off the gears now. I knew that low press for reps for myself was, you know, 145 kilograms, should just be whatever Fares did. I just did one more rep than him, and. Well, let's just go on to the low press. One, four, five kg, eight reps. I think I did eight reps and I had 25, maybe even 30 seconds left. I just went out there as fast as I could and got eight reps, banged out as fast as I could. The Canadian did, I think it was five. So, you know, those four events for myself, won them all, pretty comfortable. I just wanted to, I was just trying to say this year with Daniel, I wasn't wanting to do anything stupid. I didn't want to over exert myself. I didn't want to get hyped up for anything, you know, because when I get, if I get hyped up for stuff, the wrecking ball hold, I, had to do this so I, all, all I had to do with this one was I was six points clear but for me to get a point I had to stand up onto the forklift thing and lift it up for a second lift it back down which is exactly what I'd done I wasn't going to showboat I wasn't doing anything stupid just doing up and down and that was me through it was comfortable for me in the end as I think people know as well it was my first ever time not doing stone off so it was nice to actually have an extra 24 hour rest which I didn't really know what to do with myself but um yeah, we go back to like well, the mindset. I think you've seen a lot of people like, you know, were a bit more hype. Look, got a hero hyped as well, which is obviously, you know, you're allowed to do that and stuff. And some people get, I think, a bit too hyped. Some people get, don't show much emotions. But this qualifier for me, I didn't really show too much emotions. I kind of just, like I said from day one, you know, I'm a professional athlete. I believe that, you know, me being world's strongest man, I should make the final before I even step out on the field, no matter who I'm against. If I don't make it, then that's a massive failure myself. So for me, it's just getting to the final the easiest way and with all my energy intact. And that's why today, you know, I don't feel fatigued mentally. You know, even though I can feel good physically, a lot of people that can still do the qualifiers and get through to the kind of finals or in bigger comps can still feel drained mentally because they may have to push a wee bit more. They may have to get psyched up a bit more for you know a certain event or two in the qualifiers. I know a few of the other guys in their groups, you know, might have had to exert, exert a lot of energy. Like Brian Shaw, for example, you know, he got into the stone off and you know may have to get tuned into his mental kind of energy more than he would have wanted to. So it was just for me just kind of not show much emotion I'm so so happy I got to the final don't get me wrong but I just wanted to do it as chilled out as I could talk to Dan every single every single event what we wanted to do and then just had that kind of drawn out in my head and now and then get to the final and what I was doing in the qualifier to the final is going to be a massive switch is going to get enlightened and then I'm going to go because talk about last year as well and I think you know Eddie said it in interviews other people said it in interviews that like I've changed Mentally this time, my mindset last year I think was good, but it was more like I was using a lot of lot of energy in the qualifiers. So I was getting really kind of hyped up in the qualifiers. Although I obviously, well, obviously I'm one world strongest man. Don't get me wrong, that <laughs> I should be happy. But like off camera, I was maybe like I was just getting so drained. Like the night before the final last year at Worlds, I was spewing. I was overthinking things. My my mental thing was just crashing because I had just so, used so much energy trying to get to the final, you know, getting in a stone off, exerting too much energy and getting too much emotion. So that's why this way I kind of flipped it on its head and was like, right, if I can just do the opposite and get to the finals, you know, basically a hundred percent, which I am, it's a win-win for myself. So yeah, that's what I did. Massive shout out to my group, what a battle it was. 
uh, Fairs and um, the Canadian boy. Unbelievable to see some new faces in the final as well, and it's going to be really good. But you know, I'm happy with my performance. Happy how I kept my head, kept cool. You know, of all people are talking about these group things. You know, at the end of the day, I'm world strongest man. You can't say that having Fairs and Ivers in your group is easy because if you look at past history of me with Ivers, how the stone battles have gone, our events have gone. If you look at him in competition, look at Fairs in competition, they're unbelievable athletes. Um, so yeah, Andy Black as well, massive shout out to him for stepping up last minute as well and, you know, mixing it with the big boys. You know, there's a big key point here that COVID is now coming, to, well, let's say fingers crossed, coming to an end. And as you can see, everybody's got their, well, we've obviously got Simon out, we've got everyone out, but the main person I've got out with me this year is Sinead. She's not been too world strongest man for the last two years, which is mind boggling. You know, she's uh, missed me coming second place and she's missed me winning it. And having Sinead here this year has just kind of made me relax. I think when I talked about just earlier about my mind over kind of overthinking things and getting really stressed and sometimes using too much energy and stuff last year, Sinead's now here to kind of be like, just chill me out. I'm not in a room now myself, walking around the room, looking at walls. I've actually got someone to be able to talk to. I've got someone to chill with at night, to take my mind fully off strong man when I'm, when I'm out here. You know, because being out here by yourself is a very lonely place to be when you don't really know anyone and you can't really go out much. So yeah, having Sinead here, she's actually just doing everything for me, packing my bags in the morning, making sure my food's order. The good thing about this right now as well is Nathan, Dan and Sinead are communicating right now instead of me. So. Instead of me being the middleman now, or someone else being the middleman, Sinead's now getting information from Dan and getting information from Nathan, saying Nathan's telling Sinead what I eat, she orders it, I eat the food instead of me worrying now. So it's very good, it's really worked. You know, I wasn't really sure how it was going to work. Obviously, don't get me wrong, Sinead's my wife, but last year I won it without, I, didn't, I just wanted to be like, right, what's it going to be like? But had no, this has been unbelievable. This year's qualification for me has been better than I could ever thought um, in my head. I was like stone off at the worst, but I didn't want to be there, being so chilled out. I think people can see when I was out competing, when I've been doing my interviews and stuff, just how kind of chilled I have, being not really bothered about the heat, not bothered about equipment and stuff, just going out onto the uh, field and, use it and doing it. And that's a big you know, credit to Sinead, how she's helped me with my mindset as well. Working with Amy, but I, I can't just talk to Amy now because being out here, because we're eight hours different. So she's again, someone I can talk to. Obviously I've got Dan, Simon the Mulligans here, but you know they're not family. They're not. They're, so I, I can I just you know, last thing at night, put a movie on with Sinead, watch it, and it's, for me it just feels like I'm at home. You know, I'm basically at home, got my camera guys around me. Simon's in the office. He comes and Jordan and Mulligans, who I'm used to being around. Dan, like I said, who used to be around, and then it's just Sinead, last thing at night, and we're going to train together. So that's what we basically like. So this is all working really good together. But yeah, having Sinead there is 100% a bonus for me. We'll talk about Dan. This is Dan's first ever time being at World Strongest Man. Well, with myself and Luke, we've sat down before Worlds, and you know, obviously me being aut of autism, Luke having his ish different issues. We're both different athletes. Dan had to kind of get a balance of, you know, what not to do in front of me to Luke, not what to to do for a look to me, etc., etc. So I used to ha need Dan to do a lot of uh, hands-on and a lot of telling me what to do, etc. Now, but now I'm a more independent athlete. So um, Dan's more just there now in the background. If we need anything, he'll tell us. He'll obviously come out with us when we're competing, etc. So the greatest thing right now is Dan's giving us space. So Dan's done the first part of his job is to get me and Luke to the final. He can take that off his box, and he's done it in the most professional manner. You know, we could ask for. He's, he's listened to the feedback we've given him at home. Uh, he's stuck to his game plan, we've stuck to our game plan. We have banter, you know, we go back and forth with each other and have banter, which is really good, but, you know, he's come to the events we're obviously going to compete at. I'm group one, Luke's group five, done that. And then after that, he's like, you know, do what you want, or he'll text me as saying, look, I'm going to leave you to chill tonight like you did last year, you're just going to chill yourself. So he's now taking into taking it into his own head now that, you know, we need our own space, we need to chill. And that's really good from Dan because, like I said, maybe a few months ago, we might have just all chilled alone too much together and been around, you know, each other. So he, he now knows when to give us space. He now knows, you know, when to approach us. He knows when to ask for stuff. He knows, you know, he just knows everything now about us. So it's a really, really good bit. And it's really good that Dan's here as well. And it's good, you know, the qualifiers are the place where you test all this stuff. And like I said, I tested the things with Sinead. We've tested stuff with Dan. And this is working 
far better than I thought. So if we can keep this going for the whole weekend, it's going to be really good. But yeah, having Dan here is a massive, massive boost. And what he's, like I said, the feedback he's, we've given him and he's taken that on board 100% and it's been amazing. Thank you for watching this. Hopefully, Mr. Cool Carbon Collective, you will see on the weekend. Thank you for all your support. And uh, stay safe, smile, stay spicy. And keep ringing that little bell. Ding a ling 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 a